Let's talk about the foam sequence numbers uh, on a turbine oil. Because again, I see this sometimes used as a proxy for the quality of the oil when it isn't necessarily. Let's talk about it a little bit. All right, so foam happens naturally when there is mixing of air as well as fluids, right? It happens in beer and it happens in oil systems as well. All right, now remember, there are three different types of air. There's dissolved air, which you can't see. There is entrained air, which is the actual stuff which is dangerous for our oil system. And then, of course, we have foam at the top. Now, foam is a necessary evil, right? What, what we want is for entrained air bubbles to rise to the surface, become foam, and then break and release air back into the headspace. So foam is desirable. Stable foam is not desirable, right? We don't want the foam to hang around and for the foam level to, to gradually increase. Okay. So let's talk about it. Let's have a, a sample. Let's talk about how the uh, the ASTM test is done. So I would have dissolved air in here. That's, that's unavoidable. But what we're going to do is under ASTM D892 is we are going to introduce some foam, right? So we basically blow air into the sample. Now I have foam. So uh, the, the amount of blowing is controlled by the test. And so the foam volume after I have stopped blowing air into the sample is my first number. So that's what we would call the foam tendency. It's the tendency of an oil to have foam when oil is being actively blown through the sample. Sorry, air is being actively blown through the sample. The second number is what happens to the foam volume after 10 minutes. So that is more a measure of the foam stability. Remember, we don't mind having foam as long as it is unstable foam, right? We want the foam to break really, really quickly. Okay. If the number, the second number is zero, then that is ideal, right? Because it is reflective of the fact that there is not much stability. And if we see a time afterwards, then that is the time in seconds that it took for the foam to dissipate, right? So in all three cases, we want low numbers wherever possible. However, the importance should be placed on the second number because that's the foam stability. All right. The other thing that you would have seen is different sequence numbers, right? So there was a sequence one that's run at 24 degrees Celsius. Sequence two is exactly the same test done at 93 degrees Celsius. And sequence three is basically you take the oil from sequence two and then you let it cool down back to 24 degrees Celsius and then you do the test again. Why do these tests matter? That's a really good question. We don't want entrained air in our oil system because if we have entrained air in our oil system, it can lead to things like cavitation and micro dieseling. That in turn will increase the temperature of our oil system and then we get more oxidation and then we get more varnish, right? So that's why we don't want it in gas turbines. Additionally, we want air to be removed in the reservoir. Reservoirs have gotten smaller and smaller, which means the residence time has gotten smaller and smaller. So what we want is for air, entrained air, remember that's, that's bubbles that are in the oil system. We want them to rise to the surface and we want them to readily break to get rid of that air from our oil system. So that's why it's really important for gas turbine oils.